Hi, it's May 2022. There have been two recent papers that were published that have some very interesting J2B L283 ancient samples. Um, one of them is called A Genetic History of Continuity and Mobility in the Iron Age Central Mediterranean. That study confirmed the presence for the first time uh, of ancient DNA in J2B L283 being found in Africa. Uh, but it's the part of Africa that's the closest to Italy um, in the Phoenician city of Kerkuan. And uh, the two samples are J2B L283. They're in the sixth century BCE. And if, if you look on a map okay, of the ancient samples, this is a sam uh, map that Floor maintains. There are older samples already. We knew that our, some men in our male line ha had been living in Sardinia by 11th century BC. So it really shouldn't be a huge shock that they, by the 6th century BCE, were, would have been living, could have been living in um, Tunisia, what is now Tunisia, this uh, um, Iron Age trading port city uh, called Kerkouane. It shouldn't come as a shock, but it's still really interesting because it's the first time this was actually a Phoenician city. Uh, it doesn't mean every single person there is genetically Phoenician um, uh, 100%. Uh, in fact, these two guys that are the two samples that are J2BL283 uh, cluster autosomally with other Bronze and Iron Age samples from Italy. So that's consistent with what we would expect based on the other ancient samples of our haplogroup are found in uh, Italy and the, and the Western Balkans, um, the Adriatic coast specifically. So this, this line, interesting, both of these samples are from uh, same relative, same branch of J2BL283 called Z38240. Uh, the oldest samples of which uh, have been found along the Adriatic coast of uh, Croatia, uh, dating back to the Bronze Age. So really interesting thing about these samples is one of these lineages that these guys are positive for, PH1602, I have to zoom in really far, this guy, PH1602, that this sample is positive for, it's been found in samples from the approximate uh, area where the Iapides or Iapodes tribe were supposed to have been living um, in 700 BCE. Uh, and the most recent common ancestor of, of this line, PH 1602, was estimated by Weipel, I think, at 1100 BCE. So if this line, because of its ancient, more ancient samples, um, have been found around this area of the Adriatic coast, if it originated here along the Adriatic coast, uh, we have a pretty tight window that during which this line must have migrated, some of them migrated to Kerkouane because the, those samples are found about um, sixth century BCE. So sometime within this 500 year period of uh, 1100 to 500, 500, 600 BCE, those guys' ancestors had to have uh, migrated to Kerkwani. Uh, it's just, it's, it's hard evidence for uh, what the circumstantial evidence already indicated that uh, a lot of J2, uh, J2BL283 was moving around on the Adriatic Sea and around the coasts of Italy and Sardinia, Sicily, and even uh, Tunisia in the Iron Age, and um, probably also Bronze Age once we get to, to find some older samples from Italy, still uh, relatively undersampled. So we could find more of our 
uh, ancestors in Italy. The other interesting find, uh, a study called Whole Genome Analysis Sheds Light on the Genetic Origin of Huns, Avars, and Conquering Hungarians. This study yielded three samples in J2B L283 from modern Hungary. I mean, from what is now Hungary. The samples ranged in age from 648 CE to 950 CE. So it's, this is not the oldest, these aren't the oldest uh, ancient samples in our haplogroup found. One of, one of these samples that I think was really interesting is the one from Lake Balaton. Uh, I had, I had uh, written an article about the Castelli culture, which was a Pannonian Roman survival culture uh, in, uh, during this period of when the Avars were dominating this, this area. Um, people that had a Romanized culture from Pannonia had a fortress at Kestelli and um, they buried their dead in the cemeteries around here. One of the cemeteries they found dating to 800 CE, or actually I think the paper said 9th century CE, uh, they found someone positive for a very rare line of J2B, L283, that's called YP91. And so far, this is the oldest sample that is has been found in this male line. Here's a map showing where other living samples in this male line trace their male line descent. The ancient sample from near Lake Balaton and this Castelli culture um, uh, cemetery is here at the bottom. Um, the, most of the other men trace their descent to someplace further north uh, between Germany and um, Poland, like southeastern Poland. So uh, it will, this is a very interesting male line. We don't know exactly where it came from, but Central Europe is the best guess because this whole region of Central Europe, um, particularly in Southern Central Europe, has a lot of diversity in uh, this male line. So the interesting thing about this sample from the study is he wasn't 100% European genetically in terms of all of his DNA, which we call autosomal DNA is the DNA you get all that determines how you look, uh, what, what sort of genetic predisposition to disease you have. Um, uh, you inherit from both parents and it's mixed randomly and we can't, you, uh, you can't really trace it back too far in any one line. This is called autosomal DNA. His autosomal DNA was half European and half uh, Hun or Avar. These were groups that have their deeper origins in Asia, East Asia. And um, they, this man that lived in the 9th century CE that's positive for this uh, J2B YP91 line, he, he was about half of his ancestry came from ancestors that were Hun or Avars. So that's really interesting. The other two men that, are, uh, what, that were J2B L283 from this study um, had either were either 100% European um, DNA, autosomal DNA, or one guy had a little bit of admixture from the conquering elite, which is what they call the people that uh, I presume were the those that brought the Hungarian language with them when they came a little bit after, when they came after the Avars and Slavs, um, the Magyars, what they call them, and speaking a Uralic language. They came from a different part of Asia, so their signature is a little bit different. Uh, and in the paper, at the, in the PCA, 
there is a line, a green line. Uh, oh, why don't I show it? I'm not sure that I'm allowed to actually show the PCA chart from this study, but uh, if you look at it, it's linked from my article. The, uh, the paper is linked from the article. Um, there, there's a green line that, is, that you can form by these little green uh, marks, which are from the uh, conquering elite time period. And anyone along this line, which is called a Klein, anyone along this line has uh, some percentage of European, indigenous European to that time DNA and some percentage of uh, conquering elites wherever they came from in Asia uh, ancestry. And uh, the people that are furthest to the, to the right are the ones that are the purest, so to speak, uh, 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 of having the Asian s signal from wherever they came from, which this paper theorizes is, you know, where other Uralic speakers were, were had been living um, in, in central, northern Central Asia. Um, the, our sample is not along this cline of green conquering elite samples, although it ends up being kind of close to the the uh more more purist asiatic signal group within the conquering elite but it's not within that cline and when that what that means is that the our ancestors well not our ancestors but this one sample that happens to have some admixture from asia his admixture from Asia makes more sense to interpret it as Han or Avar because all the samples that were from a Han Avar time period, which was earlier before the Hun these other guys came, they have different proportion of European versus Han or Avar ancestry. And uh, depending on what percentage they have, they just all end up on this line. The ones that are more European are more to the left and ones that are have more Han or Avar are more to the right. Our sample just happens to be in the middle of this from left to right. And the, uh, anyway, this is too much detail. I don't need to go into this detail. Let's move on. Another interesting development, now we're going to the Weifel tree, is that uh, guys in rare paraclades, paraclade means it's like the brother of a much more prolific lineage that went on to have sons that went on to have sons that went on to have sons. And a paraclade is a yet unknown br brother branch that just has one sample that has been tested that we just know, yeah, they have the same common ancestor above that, but then he's negative for this only branch that we know of. So there's four different bronze uh, sample four different living men today who uh, until recently on the Weifel tree uh, their next closest relative was Bronze Age and now uh, just at about the same time a lot of them have uh, found a closer relative uh, that did a, a next generation test and is on the Weifel tree now so we'll start at the top and one guy is uh, from Poland Kujawsko Pomorski um, Governorate? No, they don't call it Governorate. Voivodeship. Uh, he, oh, I'll just switch to the live tree so you can see. They, uh, Weifel already figured out which SNPs he shares with this uh, next closest relative um, who w was an ethnic Russian uh, from Lithuania. But this ethnic Russian from Lithuania is a STR match, really uh, reliable, uh, to another guy who says he's from Russia. So uh, I think we should assume that this Russian flag really does represent some guys from Russia. I don't know where in Russia, though, unfortunately. Uh, so this is a new branch. It's not that old, but this is helping. We'll get an estimate when the Weifel tree updates. We'll get it. Uh, this is helping to establish the geographic diversity of uh, YJYP61, which is the most prolific branch of 
uh, YP91. Uh, okay, other other samples recently. Um, uh, this man traces descent to England. Uh, I just chatted with him. Um, I don't remember right now where in England uh, he's from, but uh, he's gonna set his. Oh, I, actually, I was wrong. This sample, I don't even know who it is. Uh, I have to try contacting him. He's a Dante, or no, I mean, sorry, he's a Nebula customer, I believe. Um, but there's another guy in this position uh, who is going to submit his BCF. He did a, a big Y. And uh, he's related to this sample from West Virginia. Um, they are of deeper uh, English ancestry. This is a paraclade or rare brother line to Z2509, JZ2509. When we find more people that are uh, related to this, these men from England, then we'll have a better idea of uh, where the ancestors of this line have been living 5,500 years ago. So far, the greatest diversity is in Italy. Um, and we will just see if, if we find more ancient samples uh, or, or diversity among modern samples to co co confirm that. Uh, another, another very old line, very old paraclade. Uh, Z615, which uh, is the ancestor of most living men in J2BL283. All the men f descended from this branch, uh, descend from one man that lived about 5,000 years ago. This has the ancient sample from Serbia, from Mokrin, Serbia. Uh, there are two living men, one tracing descent from Mecklenburg, Fort Palmer in Germany, and another from Suffolk. They're, these are just the only guys that are positive for this line, but negative for the for the child line Z597. Um, another second one of these men it's, that's related to the guy from Mecklenburg Four Palmer did a, um, a big Y, and now his sample is being analyzed on YFL. So all those SNPs, their branch will be determined, and all the SNPs will go on the YFL tree. And um, I've identified another guy that is, I think, their next closest relative. Uh, he believes he's from Mietzko, I might be pronouncing that wrong, Poland. It's, uh, I think, in central or southern Poland. And uh, we have to try to uh, test him. I think that he will uh, be their next closest relative, maybe from a thousand or more years ago. We'll see. Uh, going down... This ancient sample from the AVAR study, the, the newer study, the AVAR study, uh, is positive for this branch that split Y2, J, Y23094. This split showed up a few months ago. I think it was a sample that did a, a Nebula WGS test, WGS test at Nebula, and he didn't pay, he didn't answer my message, and he didn't pay for his um, analysis at YPOL. So his sample disappeared from the tree, but his branch remained. Maybe they will find, maybe Weifel will find that this ancient sample from uh, Hungary will end up sharing some SNPs with this other guy, the living guy. Maybe, maybe not. We'll see. And, and what I'm really interested in, because it's my mail line, uh, the, the rare brother of Z631 C631 is one of the more prolific branches of J2BL283. According to 23andMe, one in 220 of their customers is positive for this male line. Uh, there are two guys, I think three guys who tested at, y, at uh, Family Tree DNA. Three guys are positive for this brother line of Z631. Um, it's going to show up on the Weifel tree once they analyze this guy. For the longest time, the the second guy who was positive for it, just we have no idea who he is because he's not closely enough related. F Family Tree DNA won't show who the relative is. So it's kind of, it's really disappointing when people pay all this money for these tests and we can't even learn who's the relative. Uh, but we got really lucky that a third guy and who is positive for this line ended up being managed by a researcher that I've already already been in contact with, 
and we had no idea that he would end up being positive for this rare line. Um, so they're both from a really tight geographic distribution of Kieti province. And we will see what Weifel will estimate as how long ago their ancestor lived. Maybe it's, uh, maybe it's going to be like Roman era or, or late Iron Age. Um, we'll see. Uh, so I think that's the, those are the biggest exciting um, things in J2BL283. Uh, I can mention also, um, just for J2B research in general, ancient, ancient, ancient um, stuff, origins, uh, a sample from another study uh, fr from Georgia in the same cave that I've been in uh, called Cotias Clde. There's a cave. It's in Imereti near Chiatura. I went in this cave and I even made a video there um, because that's where my wife's male line comes from. And I wanted to test my wife's brother to see if their male line is related to the guy in the cave who was a 10,000 year old hunter gatherer from Caucasus. That's a, a branch of J2A. It turned out uh, that they were J1. So they weren't closely related to this sample at all. But then recently, uh, a new sample, I think it's called Neo 281. I could be wrong on the numbering there. Um, another, a second male sample has been recovered from that cave dated to the same time i think 9700 years ago his female his female line was related to the other sample from that cave called kk1 but his male line was j2b so i'm more closely related to that guy in the cave from 10000 years ago i'm more closely related as a j2b to that guy to that sample than the Tsutskaridze clan of Sferi, Georgia, which is like the city limit. This cave is within the city limits of Sferi. They, according to their oral tradition, they told me 80% of the men from this village are, are, uh, are Tsutskaridze. That's where the origin of Tsutskaridze men comes from. But they're J1, or at least uh, the one that I've tested is J1. So, uh, I'm really excited to see what we learn more from the sample when it's publicly released and we can look at the look at the uh, DNA and um, whether we ever find anybody living in Georgia today that's related to him. That would be really, really interesting. Okay, over and out.